I know they always say this on cooking shows, but this smells incredible. Oh wait, they probably don't say that. <laughs> Hi, my name is Carrie Anderson and today we're going to be making pot roast pasta. This is a recipe that I developed uh, one day when I found myself with too much leftover pot roast in the fixins um, and I needed a way to use it up. You can only eat leftover so many times. So I made this recipe. We loved it so much that we stopped making the pot roast for Sunday dinner and started just making this recipe. Um, it makes the whole house smell great and hopefully you'll enjoy this on a Sunday um, and make this pasta for your family. So the first thing we're going to do is clean our vegetables and get them all in the pot. We're going to use a whole onion. Um, because we're going to be cooking this for so long, I'm going to just um, peel the onion, take both the ends off, peel the paper off, and then we're just going to chunk it up into quarters and throw it right into our pot. Um, we're going to add some garlic as well. So I'm going to add a couple cloves of garlic, but I'm just going to smash these guys and then drop them right in the pot. After the garlic, we're gonna add celery. I like to leave the leaves on my celery. Um, these don't have a ton of leaves. If they all had a bunch of leaves, we would peel some of them off because they can get a little bitter in the sauce. Um, but we're pureeing this, like I said. These have flavor in them and we should just use them instead of wasting them. Um, they're not gonna make a huge difference in our recipe. I'm just chunking these guys up, like three to four inch pieces, and they're gonna go in our pot also. I'm going to use two whole sweet potatoes. Um, if you don't like sweet potatoes, uh, I'm sorry, you're missing out. <laughs> They're delicious. Um, sweet potatoes add a really delicious texture, um, a really good richness to this sauce, so that's why I prefer them. And it'll be a nice orange color between this, the carrots, and the tomatoes. And the peels are going to get pureed. They're not going to add any uh, um, adverse texture or flavor. And there's a lot of fiber in the peel. Um, and it's a nice way to skip a step. Um, when you're prepping. So these guys are going to go in just nice big chunks. And I'm kind of trying to arrange everything like around the side of my pot here. That way when I put the pot roast in I can kind of nestle him down in there and he's got some delicious flavors cooking around him. Um, and then for the carrots, um, we're going to use four carrots. I am going to peel these guys real quick. So we're going to cut off both ends, just like you would for any recipe with your carrots, and then make nice big chunks of them, and toss them in around the side as well. All right, so everybody's in the pool now as far as vegetables go, and I've got a nice big open space here where I'm going to stick my um, chuck roast down in the middle. Um, I'm going to use a chuck roast. You could use an arm roast. I mean, really any type of roast um, that you've got at the house will work for this. Um, this one's nice and clean. You don't want a huge fat cap on your roast because um, what's going to happen is that it's not going to cook down far enough in this recipe and then you're going to end up with a really fatty sauce. Um, so we're looking for a nice clean roast um, like this chuck roast that we have here. And you also want to look for the appropriate size. If you want to use this for two meals, so you can make a pot roast for dinner and then make the sauce and the pasta for the next night, which is oftentimes a um, you know, great time saver on the weekends. Um, you want a, a little bit bigger roast for your family. Of, you know, if you've got four people, you might go a four pound roast, which seems really big, but then you'll get two meals out of it and just one day's worth of work. So we're just gonna use um, salt and pepper on the outside of our roast. And we wanna season this pretty liberally. This is a lot of meat and there's not a lot of exposure. So we wanna make sure everything inside here is getting seasoned um, and has a really nice flavor to it. So salt all the way around and then we're gonna do pepper all the way around as well. And then before we throw our um, roast in the middle of all our veggies, we're gonna do a nice little pinch of salt and pepper in here. We want to make sure that our veggies are really nicely seasoned. Um, and the best way to do that is to season them now before we cook them. And then you'll see we're going to season them again when we take them out of the oven. So we're just going to make sure that we're seasoning throughout the entire process. Um, and that really gives you a nice, well-rounded flavor when you're making things that are stewed. All right, so now we're going to go down in the middle with our chuck roast. And I'm just going to kind of wedge him in around our veggies. And then we're going to add the ingredients for our sauce. So we're going to use a can of whole tomatoes. 
We wanna dump the entire thing in. We're gonna use the juice. We're gonna use everything that's in there. You just wanna check your canned um, vegetables when you buy them um, and make sure they're either low sodium or no salt added. Um, when I dump them in, I just use my hands um, and kind of smash them up a little bit. If you've got tiny hands around the house, um, this is a great job for the kiddos. Um, get their hands in here, break some things up, um, and then I'm just spreading the tomatoes around the pot um, and around the meat. All right, after we add the tomatoes, we're going to add a nice dash of Worcestershire sauce. Um, it's about a tablespoon's worth, so like seven to 10-ish shakes around the pot. Should get you there. And then we're gonna use a couple tablespoons of a whole grain mustard. If you don't have whole grain mustard at home, you could use yellow mustard, you could use Dijon, really whatever you guys have in the fridge is gonna be great. Um, mustard just adds a really nice um, sharp flavor to it and kind of rounds it out because there's a lot of acidity from the tomatoes um, and we wanna give something to give it a nice balance. And then after our mustard, the secret ingredient um, to all my cooking when I have to stew or braise things is beer or wine. Um, as the braising liquid. Um, I typically just add whatever beer or wine I've been drinking that day or plan on drinking that night. Um, and then we're just gonna go a little glug around. Um, if you're using a bottle of beer, about three quarters of the beer is gonna go in there. So we're gonna go around, you're gonna drink the rest of the beer while this cooks, and then we're gonna pull it out of the oven when it's done. Um, and then the last thing we're gonna add for our sauce is our butter. Um, this is about four tablespoons of butter. We're gonna dump this right on top. This is really gonna give us a lot of flavor and make our sauce really rich um, and have a really you know, warm and cozy texture from the fat from the butter. So once our butter's in, we're gonna put our lid on. Um, we're gonna go into a 250 degree oven for two to three hours, depending on the size of your roast. So we're gonna throw this guy in the oven. We're gonna pull our pot roast out of the oven now that it's ready. Be careful, because he might be bubbling a lot. Smells great. And then we're gonna bring him over to our counter, and we're gonna let our pot roast rest in here with the lid on for an hour. Now, if you don't have an hour to wait, or it just smells so good that you can't stand to wait an hour, you can always take the lid off and give it about 15 to 20 minutes to rest. What that's gonna do is it's gonna cool things down enough that you can handle the meat you can puree the sauce without worrying about burning yourself, and it's gonna let the meat relax a little bit after it's been in its hot tub for a couple of hours. It's gonna make shredding it easier, and you won't lose as much juice when you're shredding it. Um, it'll keep all those juices in after it rests. So after it's taken its nap for about an hour, 15 to 20 minutes if you can't wait that long, pull the meat out onto our cutting board here. And now you can see that this has been resting for a while and it's still nice and steamy, so it's really gonna retain its heat. Um, and that's what you want. It also smells very good in here. Okay, so back to our pot. So to make the sauce for our pasta, I'm gonna pull out my immersion blender. Now, if you don't have an immersion blender, that's fine. You can use a regular blender. What I will say though, is if you're gonna put this in a countertop blender at home, you want this to cool down more. Even after an hour, it's still really warm and you never wanna puree anything hot in your blender because it will explode. Not the blender, but the sauce. Um, so I'm gonna use my immersion blender and we're gonna puree this sauce so it's a nice smooth pasta sauce. I know they always say this on cooking shows, but it smells incredible. Oh wait, they probably don't say that. <laughs> it smells so good. All right, so we're gonna test our sauce um, we're gonna give it a real quick taste. Mmm, that's really good. Um, we're gonna add a pinch more salt, a tiny bit of pepper, and then I am going to nab a little bit of leftover butter and just add a tiny bit more butter to this guy, um, just so it's a real nice thick and creamy sauce. Whoop, you know, just a little bit, a little bit of butter. Okay. I'm gonna put this back onto our stove top. We're gonna let it have about 10 minutes or so um, to reduce down and get a little bit thick again. Um, we're gonna stir it fairly often while it's back there though. This is tomato based, it's really reduced, it's nice and thick already and we don't want it to scorch on the bottom because um, then all that time would have been wasted for our sauce. So we're gonna go back over here and turn it on pretty low. I've already got some water boiling for our pasta, so we're gonna finish this and then it'll be ready to go. 
while your sauce is reducing, we're going to shred our roast. If you had a really large roast, at this point you could, you know, take half of it out, eat that for dinner tonight, and save this pasta for tomorrow. But this one's pretty nice and small. We're going to shred all of them, um, and then we're going to put all of it back in our sauce. So our sauce has had time to reduce. We're going to give it a nice stir. Make sure nothing's sticking to the bottom. Um, make sure everything's really nice and incorporated. Um, at this point, we are ready to eat. I've got pasta almost done over here. And we're going to put all of our shreddy meat back into our pot roast pasta sauce. Bloop. We're going to give it a nice stir. All of our meat's going to be incorporated into our sauce. Perfect. And then I'm going to just ladle my pasta into here. You could definitely leave it separate, put the sauce on top. Um, I have worked in a lot of restaurants that really um, had a huge respect for pasta. And the uh, correct way to cook pasta is to let it finish cooking in the sauce that you're going to serve it in. Um, that means that the noodles are still going to absorb a little bit more moisture. And the moisture they're going to be absorbing instead of just water is going to be the pot roast pasta sauce that we spent so much time making. So that's what we want. We want it to taste really, whoops, noodles are flying. We want it to taste really nice and hearty all the way through. This smells so good. Yum. All right, and then we are going to go right into our bowl. Um, at home, I like to serve this with a little bit of bread. Cornbread would be delicious. Um, something to, to mop up that extra sauce that you're gonna have on the plate. So, all of it's in the bowl. We're gonna do a little bit of cheese. I said a little bit, but I'm gonna put a lot, just because I like it. And then, those celery leaves that we saved from earlier, this is how I make my dishes look fancy at home. I'm just gonna tear them apart and give us a little bit of green right on top of our pasta. Everything looks better with the garnish, and then it looks like we put a little bit more time into it than we actually did. And there you go, you're ready for dinner.